for the recording, this is uh, June 24th. Um, this is our governance working group call. And uh, today we'll be working on some of the open issues as part of that. Okay, so I'll hand it off to you, Jason, for the screen share when you're ready. There we go. So like 10 ways to unmute and I got to find the right one when I'm sharing. So good. We should see the issues page up. Does everybody see that? Good. Okay. And I am actually going to come back to our agenda to start with. That's a nice starting point. And first things first um, that I can go over is a little bit of the updates that I've done here to um, kind of reorganize and set up the repository. So I did set up an, an issue for this and I, I did a little work last week uh, kind of categorizing and helping label things as we move forward. Um, so this issue here, number 67 in the PM repository has a basic description of what I've done. And um, you can definitely see it when we're looking at the issues page here. So you can see we've got our action items, discussion items, We've got a tag for the agendas and um, a tag for notes with little help wanted tags so we can say hey this is something that we're definitely looking for um, external input or, or additional help on so um, that's the basics of the reorganization here and i'll just walk through what some of those tags are um, so we have our agenda items with that used to be labeled call um, but i just wanted them to have something a little more direct so we're going to call those meeting agenda items now and that covers all 18 going back um, action items are now labeled as action items. So if we are looking to see like, hey, I wanna know what issues are uh, that I can work on that were action items, you can actually filter and see, hey, this was all the action items from the meeting outside of the agenda. And you can do the same for discussion points or anything else. Um, so it just gives you another way to look at the data basically. So we have our action items, discussion items is the main two there. And then notes are um, designed to be like single action tasks. So as we're looking back, there's uh, just in case anything falls behind or anything we need to work on, then we have an easy way to say, hey, this is, uh, this is what needs to be done. And right now we do, we have a few past calls that we need to add notes for. Um, so these are the individual issues for that as well. I guess, the, the, yeah, sorry, I, I had one more thought on that. So the biggest ask on, on my side or, you know, as we're managing the repository, not necessarily as you're creating an issue, because I do, I would rather have someone create an issue and not label it or label it incorrectly just to get the info in there. But um, anybody who's helping manage the repository or if you notice, hey, this is a action item on the agenda to try and apply those labels that match. Um, that way we can keep everything a little more organized. And that's, and that's it, sorry. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thanks for all of um, you know reorganizing this and making it really easy um, for everyone to kind of follow along and and really pulling out the different issues and action items that we have um, within those. That's great. So I guess if we go back to like the main board and you know I know I mentioned the blog post as a potential action um, item that was open. I think maybe Lane said there was another um, project he thought we could use this time to work on as well. Um, if we wanted to go into those. And then if there's any other um, suggestions of things that we could use this time for, I think, you know, an hour can go very quickly, but uh, I think it's worth just surfacing the things that um, maybe we can close out before next week's meeting. Cool. Yeah, I think the blog post is a good place to start. The one I was referring to is number 60, which Jason is right in the middle of your screen there under survey. Yep. Um, and I just added a link to that one to a draft, uh, also a Dropbox paper doc um, at the bottom. And there's some very specific uh, placeholders there that we could as a group discuss filling in. But I think we could start with the, the, drag, uh, 
the draft blog post because this one also refers to that one anyway, and that one should go first. Cool, and um, this isn't an issue, but if we do have maybe five minutes left over at the end of the meeting, it would be great to present some of the work that's been done on, on community moderation, just because it's something that um, I think this group could help move forward in terms of having some volunteers to experiment with what we have so far. So uh, if we could just like bookmark five minutes of time at the end to go over that presentation, that would be great. Yeah, since I'm sharing my screen here, I'll just show that I, I did have you on the list right here. Um, so we can definitely take a look at that and we'll just have to make sure we have some time um, as we're wrapping things up. But other than that, I'll just try to uh, drive the screen share here based on what we're talking about or if somebody else wants to take over, just let me know, we can do it either way. So uh, does everyone have the link um, to this? I see a bunch of people in this document, but I can drop it in as well. Maybe <laughs> we take just a few minutes to um, go through and see if there's any uh, uh, comments on the blog post. I think it's it's very well done. So thank you, Jenny, for making, um, for putting this together initially and then all of the comments that are in there as well. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. I'm seeing um, these new comments now. Let me pull up the, the actual link and thank you for those. Um, like I mentioned earlier, this is totally an introductory post and um, I think there are definitely a few details that can be changed or, or added in. So um, I'm wondering how we want to do this. Do we want to just go over the comments that have been left on the, the blog post and sort of discuss where we want to take those edits? I like that idea. I say let's go through and see if we can close them out, get them done, and get it right. Cool. Okay, so that first comment, great question. Definitely a placeholder phrase um, until we had something that we were more comfortable with. But Brittany, um, what language do you think would work better there? That's totally vague, obviously, that supports growth of the block stack ecosystem. Yeah, so we have um we have a mission statement around um you know growing the user-owned internet. And I think that that uh I can add that in um, up here. Um, like we also have like some longer things just around more specific things that the foundation is setting out to do. Uh, but I think if we just include the mission statement here, so I can make um, that edit now. Uh, yes, uh, sorry. Hi. Good morning. I'm um, sorry morning. being late. Awesome. Um, yeah, what what I notice here is the um, in this um, in the business model. You know the 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 role that uh, governance is is playing in the block stack ecosystem. So so it, it's it's implicit here as a building of usually own internet, but this is uh, that is uh, that. Yeah, no, is it alliance with the block stack governance framework would align with the block stack, and then that uh, that is the governance of the of the block stack uh, ecosystem. So in the second paragraph, it says something like that uh, because essentially it is the way that uh, 
this ecosystem is governed. What I understand. Could you repeat that, Philip? I think I, I lost the last bit of what you said. Okay. Um, es essentially, the 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 mission of this working group is 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 as as it says there is aligned with the block stack mission of building a user a user and is a user or and user I don't know it's English um, user own internet that uh, so then then actually the 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 it's not only the governance work but is the governance for the block stack ecosystem. I don't know uh, there has to put it, but uh, essentially the, the, we have to build the governance for the block stack ecosystem that is of course aligned with the block stack uh, purpose and all that. And, and so, so that's, that's the main uh, role of the, of the working group or, or the foundation should be that, that uh, have that role or we help the foundation in order to to uh, to accomplish that uh, goal or that uh, mission. Oh, okay, so um, where it says develop a governance model, are we also thinking that the working group drives like enforcement of governance in the block stack ecosystem? I don't know if that's actually what this group would feel comfortable saying, but. No, no, it's not enforcing, but it helps or guide or input or um, consulting, consulting group or uh, I don't know. Uh, it's um, okay. But, but but essentially, the the Stack Foundation has a role of uh, putting into in, into practice the role. That is in the, this ecosystem that, that we saw the flywheel model. Then this, you need a, a kind of a, a certain rules and certain behaviors in order to really to prosper, you know. And so then, in order to to, to have this um, move, so then these working groups should be uh, in favor of of helping this to make it happen or something like that. Uh, but the, I don't see that purpose there in, uh, in those two paragraphs. It says that the alignment, alignment but not the, it's, it says that it's, it's to help the block stack initiative to establish a stack foundation, but it's why we start as, uh, establishing a stack foundation is because the model, the business model is you, we have you as as it's a community driven. We need a governance in order to so then this is a way that the community gets involved with um, uh, with, with this model, business model, or I don't know the ecosystem. Would be. I don't know if you understand. I, I have a graph in the second paragraph um, that Lane is flagged, and Jason's also commented on about it being community driven and just getting a little more specific. That could probably could be a good place to to talk about the specific the, the specifics of how the governance working group actually drives that. So I think that's a good point, and thank you, Jason, for including those notes from the the GitHub repo. I think maybe like a line afterwards, sort of qualifying how that's going to be done, would make that more meaningful. Yeah, yes, I get it. Yes, yes, good. Great. So I'll just I'll just give that a thumbs up and edit that in a little bit. Yeah, and I'll I'll add a quick little comment here too because we got we got the building a user owned internet here and then we repeat it again. Here. Here, um, so that might be too repetitive. First, paragraphs, but I think again, pulling it all together with some of this info um, from the resources that that we had 
would would definitely be helpful. And as Philip's saying, if we can speak a little more to the how, and um, that's what I liked about some of what we had in the repo here was like, hey, you know, we, we want people involved, definitely. It, it comes down to the community helping out, and these are some of the ways to do so, including some of what we've done. So I like that. Anything that we want to add or change, um, like do you think we could add a sentence and close this out, or did you want to add those edits later? I, I heard you mention possibly later. Oh, I would do that later. Copy editing okay. on this call would be too tedious. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Yes, this note about Lane's name being the only one mentioned, I, I figured that might be <laughs> something you're uncomfortable with, Lane. Um, I'm not sure. I, I would love to mention more names of, of people in the group and just wanted to see whether that was okay with everyone. Um, I know we've had some members sort of in and out, um, but we also have very consistent members. So I wasn't really sure what approach to take here, whether we, you know, mention everyone or we mentioned a few key players in the group, um, what are we all comfortable with there? I'm fine with my name being on there. I don't know how many names you want to add all together. <laughs> but, uh, Thank you, Harold. I appreciate that. Don't leave me Thank hanging. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Harold, yeah. <laughs> and Philip, if you're open to it, Jason, yeah, I'd love that. Of course. Um, okay. Oh, you guys, if you're open to it. and if you don't want your full name and you just want like your, you know, social handle or something, like that's fine too. Your name can have a picture. I always had, <laughs> I always imagined there being cute pictures of everybody too, if you wanted that. Well, that, that's an interesting thought, right? Like you'd have uh, like pictures to break up the copy kind of thing and a, and a few of the people, or if we even had a screenshot from one of our calls, um, which would be easy enough to grab either from a past one or, or from the current one. So there might be something fun we can do there to say like, hey, this is the group. Um, regarding the names thing, I was curious, you know, I'm, I'm definitely open to, to having my name out there, but, um, you know, as we're doing a little description or talking about everybody, I don't know how long that would drag this out versus just focusing on that diversity of backgrounds. Um, because, you know, it's, it's great, like Juliet, obviously, the background in law, um, backgrounds in tech and academia, we have, like it says, you know, the app founders, developers, community members, is there ways, do we want to expand those general categories versus being specific to some of the people involved? Or do, do we think that would be any better? It sounds like a good idea to me, like, like adding lay people. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody, everybody's included, that's the goal. My my take on this, Jason, I agree with you. I don't know that we need any specific names necessarily in this post. I think referring to diversity of backgrounds is fine. If we want to throw in things like Ethereum Foundation, former Ethereum Foundation, whatever, whatever, that can go in there without my name necessarily. Um, and I think we had talked previously about a future post where we sort of profile, you know, people individually or as a group. Like maybe we could save that for a second or like a later post in a series. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something like really the governance working group that's probably a good idea so yeah i mean what other categories do we want um or is just taking lane's name out and um making the focus of that the the background the suggestion that folks are making were there more backgrounds that we wanted to add in there yeah, I think it would be um, good to add lay lay folks like myself, uh, and and to to kind of put to kind of put that out there to make lay folks feel okay. comfortable if they ever come across it. Cool. Okay. And I think if if it feels very unwieldy for like a long run on set, you know, sentence of like this person, this is this, we could always just you know pull it out like sort of name you know a quick little you know few word bio if we want um, to because I think we may have probably at least five, maybe 10 people um, who I know who've contributed a lot on these calls and, and just in the, in the group, so very cool. Yep. Okay, next comment with um, the various things we've tackled 
yeah, I think it's great to include links to the relevant um, issues and repos there. So thumbs up on that. And okay, thanks again. Looks good. Yeah, so for number two, there, bullet point number two, I was thinking a link directly to the list of issues under proposals, so stack scope slash proposals mm -hmm. slash issues. Um, and then the third one talks about SIPs. Yeah, we don't have a single link, I think, to, to anything specifically about the governance of the Sachs Foundation. I mean, there's like a placeholder issue, but as far as like substantive stuff goes, I think maybe just a link to that list of issues under proposals. Um, that could even work for both of them, or else we could include the list, a link to the direct Google Doc that's on the SIP proposal mm -hmm. process. There's several options, just, just for people who want to dig deeper. Yeah, no, I think linking to each one is probably a good start. So number one in that repository is the SIP thing, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I can also just drop links in the document. Well, that'd be helpful. Yep, and I see added Primavera to Philippi there. I see Brittany's comment um, about the foundation now being live, so we can update that for sure. That makes sense. I'll find some copy that sounds good there. Okay. I saw that coming too. Yep, and makes total sense to add a, a CTA. Sure, uh, all these comments have around you. I think they make sense. And um, as far as copy editing goes, like I said, it's a little tedious to do on on the call. And I am happy to just make these edits afterwards and let everyone know when that's been updated and we can get ready to to publish after soon after that. Anything else that anyone wants to add? Sorry, I'm catching back up with everyone there. <laughs> okay. Nothing else? If not, we can move on from this. Um, I think uh, just one thing is timing. So um, if we, you know, I know you're going to take away sort of to make some of these edits and go through. Um, I guess the next step is, do you want to post it or submit a, a draft to the group here? And, and then we can post it next week. I think um, what would be the best next steps for it? Sure, why don't we say that all these edits will be incorporated by Friday, everyone can take a look over the weekend and we can sort of prepare for like a Monday or Tuesday publication date. Sounds good. Okay. Everyone. That was very fast and very efficient. Thank you. I, I think this call format is promising. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's next? <laughs> I think the, the last one we didn't hit um, was the, the whole acronym thing. Are we okay with removing the acronyms? This is a small thing, but uh, it may be worth taking a second to talk about. I just think that like, branding is important and, and that, you know, we all get on the same page about how we communicate about 
Um, and this is not just about the working group. This is also includes the tax foundation, other things. Um, like if we can get on the same page about it and kind of have a unified way that we refer to it. Um, and this is this is more than just the name. This is also like the blurbs, you know, like the blurb that Jason dropped in at the top there. Like what, like, yeah, exactly. Like we have this, this phrase stacks gov, like what is stacks gov? What is the expanded form of that? Is it like the stacks? What do I call it? Like the Stacks Community Governance Initiative or something? I'm not sure if other people agree with that. Like may maybe we should open a separate issue and just have like a very low key branding exercise where we all get on the same page on some of these things, just throwing that out there. But part of this is whether we want to use an acronym or not. Sure, I'm not crazy about GWG. I mm -hmm. dropped that in there because I hated typing governance <laughs> working group over and over again. So if we could agree on um, on a different, more specific name that we think branding wise is representative of, of us and, and what we do, then that would be great. I mean, I'm totally not tied to GWD, <laughs> Gee, so whatever works for everyone else works for me. Cool. I was trying to see if it could make swag, but it doesn't. Stacks working group, <laughs> just get SWG. <laughs> Stacks working and action group. <laughs> <laughs> Swag. <laughs> Even little things like whether we want to capitalize the term working group. Like if you if you glance at that um, uh, email that I put together for the survey respondents, like I wasn't sure what to do there either. All right, so for that one, sounds like we're going to move it on to a separate issue, but I've got it down here on the to-do list as well. Um, so that's a, that's definitely some good questions there, but I think we can take that on with a, a little issue to those kind of questions. And it also, like, you know, one of the things we talked about last week was developing some sort of, I mean, not a full-on, like, marketing plan, but how to make things tie together. You know, if we release the blog, do we want to also throw a link here and do this there? And I think it ties into the standards, op standard operating procedures and that kind of thing as well. So I think we'll have some, some room to kind of play with all those concepts together. Well, that sounds good to me, Jason. And um, when you talk about marketing, are you just, are you referring to promotion of, of this specific blog in general or general or the process for how we share this with community and um, how we continue to release these kinds of publications? I think more of the second part, like when we're talking about the flow of things, like, hey, we'll release the blog post. We want to make sure we post it to Discord, we post it here, we post it there. It ties into this, it ties into that. Anything that we can use to, to maximize those efforts, if we record them as we're going through them now, then we can make sure we're consistent in the future. Um, so I think it'll all slowly start to come together as we're doing it. I just want to place some attention on it. That's all. Sure. Yeah. There's, yeah, I think that. Um... That should come pretty easily. Um, we can take a look at all the properties where we want to share this across social media and across our channels and the cadence with which we want to keep sharing these. So yeah, I mean, I can add that even as an issue. Okay, so if there's nothing else, happy to move on from this. All right, so Lane, did you want to talk a little about the survey piece since we said that was kind of related and we might want to take a look at that as well? Sure, you mind opening up that doc so everyone can see it. I'll also drop a link to it, give it just a sec. Right here is the link. Uh, yeah, so we've talked about this on several consecutive calls. Um, just as a recap, some fairly significant proportion of survey respondents, I believe it was a majority, uh, chose to share their email address, right? That was an option, um, optional thing they could do. 
And we've talked, um, again, on several calls about wanting to send a follow-up email to them, uh, hopefully sooner rather than later before the you know, survey fades too much in their memory. Um, and I, my, my point here is that I think that this group of people who took the time to fill out this long survey uh, is, a, is a particularly high potential group of folks to get more involved in governance. And many of them, who knows how they found the survey link, maybe they saw it in an email or they saw it shared on Twitter or something. They may not be aware of some of the other governance initiatives that, you know, that we're um, uh, that we're running, right? So um, uh, the only other point I had made previously was that it might make sense to include um, something novel, something new, like a link to something like the blog post that we just reviewed in this email. And so you'll see there, I, I do have a link, um, which obviously for now is just to the, the, the document in progress that we were just looking at. We can replace that with the final link. Um, but I think it might make sense for these two to go out together. Um, you know, folks can read this for themselves. Obviously, this is just my take, like feel free to rearrange things, add things, remove things, whatever. In particular, I highlighted that whole chunk up front, which probably also belongs in our branding guidelines. Uh, I don't know if people want to rephrase it, if people think it's too much, uh, if people think it would, we'd be better served by including a link to something or, or just to the blog post where maybe this would be included. Uh, I guess the one point I tried to bear in mind as I drafted this is, it probably should be pretty short. I think people tend not to read emails that are longer than a page. Um, Jenny, you might have more thoughts on this one. I think you've um, you know, done a lot of this in this community already. Um, you are right about that. <laughs> Uh, I think I think there's a strategy of doing like a an above the fold, below the fold sort of thing, right? So, um, the beginning just uh, focusing on on thank you for the contribution. Um, you know, here are three t key takeaways from what we what we found uh, with the survey, and just having those bullet points be laid out pretty clearly. Um, you know, and then uh, if you want to learn more, and that can be sort of below the fold in in the email. Um, I'm wondering if this is a good opportunity to, so I, I see you have lines about where to get started and, and you've linked to Discord in the forum. Um, I'm wondering if there's like a friendlier way to get folks to self-identify, right? So like a um, join us for this specific call. It's like a, you know, it's like a happy hour. It's a, it's, you're not, you're not actually going to have to do any work, um, but you just get to meet other, other folks who filled out the survey and you also get to meet the, the working group. And it's sort of like a, you know, like these ambassador meet and greets that we've had for, for test and ambassadors, which are, which tend to be really fun. We do breakout groups. So that's, you know, a sort of a separate issue, but I, I was trying to think of getting ways for these stakeholders to self-identify and actually engage with community um, beyond just like consuming um, the content that we, we as the governance working group push out to them. So maybe we can include something like that um, and plan for some sort of event with uh, these survey respondents. Thank you, Jenny, that's super helpful. Yeah, two, two quick um, thoughts to add here. The first is that we had talked, I guess in the last call about maybe doing a, a different event, maybe making it quarterly. Um, this could be a good opportunity to schedule the first of those. I, I agree with what you're saying. I think that, that the more low touch that first uh, kind of entry point is for folks, the, the easier it might be, the, the less the lift might be. And second, um, I, I think you'll probably agree it's important to have like a single main call to action on any of these things, whether it's, um, you know, whether it's a blog post, whether it's an email, uh, and this does not have like one really clear call to action. So that's something we might want to improve. Um, I'll, I'll add some notes in this talk as people add more comments. Yes, or, or could be, you know, like an uh, invitation for the a presentation or to present, uh, to, to show the, you know, Present the, the, the outcome of, a, of this survey. Um, it's, it's. I think that it's very important to to thank the people, you know, and I, I, th I think that is, is quite good that uh, the way you put that uh, email, and so then we, we have to use that opportunity if they read it to to. Uh, to to jump to the next action, yeah, that's very important. Maybe maybe one action that will be like a, uh, like a kind of a party with uh, with a small presentation about uh, the findings and all that, and then and then uh, and had a chance to meet the other people, whatever, and, uh, and market that 
that could be the town hall that we call in the last <laughs> meeting. But it's not a town hall, it's just the, it's the survey presentation or something like that. Or what have been done in the, in the government group or whatever. Could be, it be broader than the survey. Um, as far as, so, so thank you, Philip, also for your feedback. Um, yeah, I think that that's, a, as, as Jenny suggested, it's, it's an interesting but a slightly separate question. Um, but we, maybe we can take some time today to talk about uh, what some sort of event like that might look like. I was just going to say in terms of concrete use of the next few minutes, um, you know, helping me fill in some of these placeholders, right? So you see these, these, these things that I put in brackets here. Um, if anything jumps out in anyone's mind, like what survey results were especially interesting or insightful to them, it'd be helpful to fill these things in uh, now if, if folks have things that come to mind. Uh, I, I don't worry about the, the number of countries, number of languages, like that's something I can grab very quickly, but what like issue did people highlight that stood out to people or what results were especially surprising or insightful? I guess I could have done that as a comment, but one for me is definitely that that amount of time spent because uh, I don't think I saw that in here. And um, just to kind of acknowledge it, to add another thank you to it, and to say like, wow, people really really dug in. Also, Lane, you had a the original document that we were like analyzing the results with. Um, could you drop a link in a comment? Uh, for, yeah, for it's that, uh, so we I, can go back I, and forth. I'm literally doing that as uh, as we <laughs> speak. Uh, great minds think alike. Yep. Excellent. One aspect that I would like to stress is the is this is this concept of of this is a new process that uh, uh, that is coming up in this uh, ecosystem. So that that's something that uh, that could be, and then uh, that's something that the people you know that uh, the reaction of the people is that uh, they they are taking this the this getting more conscious that how important it is so that's one one fact that uh, the people you know that we see that that is growing the this uh, conscience of uh, of participating in this in in, 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 the, in the process of governance so that's something that uh, so it, just to participate it will be just uh, it was a kind of a knowledge acknowledgement that uh, that's important Of course, it will be have been good of the 180. How much was 190 to have a bigger number? But, um, but it was good. No. Do you have statistics from the rest of uh, the what the, the 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 that the not from the 50 something that you the, the fully responded? But the, the rest of how or the statistics of that? It's a good question. I have to look at the results again. Um, I'm not sure if the, so yeah, the 192 starts, 59 responses. I think we do know where people dropped off 
like which was the last question they answered. I'm not 100% sure whether the final results include people who partially filled it out, but I think they do. Let me see what I've got. And then I went ahead and pulled up. These were um, just some of the analysis items that Lane put together uh, in a in a separate doc, and I have that linked in the um, comments for the other one in Dropbox Paper too, so we can take a look at that. Um, yeah. So Philip, to respond to your question, it looks like double checking here. I see 70 rows in this table. Yeah, unfortunately, it looks like it has not recorded. Um, I think that starts refers to people who opened the survey but didn't answer any questions, maybe. So I think we have only 59 responses, and, and not everyone responded to every question. I see. OK. so. I think it's, it's 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 a good result because we as as a block stack community uh, um, we are just realizing how important is governance. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, so it, it's it's a new thing. It's it's new and also the, you know the, the why you know the foundation has been established and all all the, the infrastructure and why you separate this, those things and all that and. So it's, it's a matter of uh, maybe you, are, you know that what's going on, but you don't, sometimes you don't realize how important it is or why you do that and all that. So, so that, that, that is one of the most important aspects that I think that uh, we, should, uh, we should stress. And, and, and then, of course, there's others, you know, that, uh, because it's a new, new way of, uh, Establishing the um, well, uh, it's hard to establish the ecosystem. You see, and that belongs to the uh, you know the as you know you to own the internet, so the, the the concept of participation, all that. And, All right, so just uh, keeping time in mind as well, too. We're, so we're approaching 7.50, about 10, 10 minutes left on the hour um, time that we usually set aside. And I know we wanted to get back to a little bit of the community stuff with Jenny. So what can, is there anything else I can add or, or highlight here as we're looking through this doc? Or did we want to start looking at the next item? Or what, what would we like to do? I've added the comment there about the, the the result of broad spread of experience levels. Is this experience levels in general or specific to block stack? Just wondering. Harold, I see your comment here. Uh, this was under fact three, right? Yes. I'm a little confused. Was this in response to something someone else had posted here? 
Um, actually, it's, it's one of the results that popped out to me. So if if it's if it's a right, 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 perfect. Yeah, and, and it's uh, experience levels in in general, uh, or is it specific to experience levels in block stack? Uh, I see what you mean. Sorry, this is something that's in the analysis. Is that is that where this is coming from? Yes, yes. It's uh, it says um, yeah, broad spread across experience levels. Oh, I see. You have it highlighted here. Broad spread across experience levels. Um, uh, let me let me double check. I know we're short on time, Jason. I'm I'm happy if uh, so. I'm I'm thankful for all the feedback everyone provided here. I'm happy to kind of uh, do a pass over this document, incorporate the feedback, um, same as Jenny said she'll do for the blog post. Uh, we can we can move on in the interest of time. And uh, Harold, I'll respond to your question in the chat box here in a sec when I have an answer. Cool, cool. Thank you, Carmen. Well, we definitely made some good progress there. I like that. It was nice to have a little change in the format and to, and to see a few things get checked off. Now, I know, is there anything else that we want to cover or is there um, anything that we need to know about on the on the foundation side or anything like that, Brittany, before we jump into the presentation on community moderation? Yeah, I think um, so we do have the first uh, stack foundation board meeting uh, this afternoon. So um, I will have more updates after that um, next week. So the Stacks Foundation bylaws sort of have included those comments in the conversation that I'll have today. Um, those bylaws will need to be you know, formally accepted by the board, but that may not happen today if there's like a lot of commentary back and forth. So I will keep you guys posted on um, that. We will be publishing like the minutes of the board meeting. Um, there is a slide deck, it's fairly light, so it may, be more useful just to publish the notes. Um, but yeah, I'll have more updates on that next week. So if we want, we can kind of table uh, further details on that and then use the, the next few minutes um, for the community presentation. Okay, great. Um, so I, I think the docs or the link that I can share first to just give everyone some context. Is this one? Sorry, Jason, I should have sent that to you earlier. That's okay. The one one of the challenges I'm having is figuring out how to pull up the chat while I'm doing the screen share. That's fine. I can do the screen share if that makes it easier. Perfect. I'll let you take over. Okay. Okay, so I think everybody is familiar with um, Stack Overflow at this point. I've, I've mentioned their um, theory of, of moderation stuff um, a few times and have just been really inspired by the way that they distribute moderation and community management across their entire community. So they have a bunch of um, different privileges lifted, listed for um, members of their community and they basically have uh, so let's scroll up here so they've got like reputation points or um, just a certain number of points that match up to your contributions on the forum um, the kinds of privileges you have um, or actually the yeah the main privileges that you can have or these are I guess these would be called milestones um, oh yeah so these are the different milestones that you can hit with um, your reputation points and then um, if you click on this, it kind of delves deeper into what you can actually do. Um, this is pretty reminiscent of, of the kinds of privileges that you can have in Discord. And so one of the big tasks um, that uh, I and um, Russ were working through is just figuring out um, a tiered system very similar to this that would work for Discord and that could also be extrapolated for um, sites like the forum and any other communication channels that we will use or continue to use at Blockstack. Um, so working off of this, I came up with these um, 
different roles here and these different milestones and, and uh, privileges. So there's some notes here. Um, I think that if, if everyone wants to, to go a little deeper, you can just look through these notes that explain how the system works. But um, I basically split it up into four major roles that you could have. So you've got contributors, reviewers, editors, and producers, not tied to the, any of the names. Um, I just thought they made sense for the kinds of things you could do here. Uh, but basically, you can imagine your journey as um, as a, a new community member in Discord, um, all the way to, you know, as a, a key contributor, someone who spends a lot of time in Discord and understands um, the dynamics of the community. So you start off and, you know, the first, one of the very first things you can do is send a message to a public channel. Um, and you can see here, like, as you gain reputation points or um, as you help more community members, you get access to more privileges. So um, I think the key thing here is that there will be a public audit log um, and it would be a channel, right? So every sort of um, moderation action that's taken would be logged in this channel and everyone could see that. So if someone decided to ban a user, um, it would update the channel with that action with a reason as well. And certain people could dispute those actions. So if someone just hated another person and banned them for no reason, that would show on the audit log. And um, folks with some higher privileges, so let's say in the editor category, would be able to dis dispute that basically by emoji voting and being like, hey, why did you, you take this action? It um, doesn't make any sense. So there would definitely be like a layer of, um, so we'll call them editors, a layer of editors who are looking at the different moderation actions that are being taken and actually reviewing whether they're legitimate or not. Um, obviously the core of this system is that um, there is there is a bit of an honor system of everyone understanding the code of conduct and everyone understanding um, what appropriate moderation is. So, you know, you have someone at the producer level who has some pretty high level privileges like veto power over certain server decisions. Um, those kinds of decisions would be limited to, you know, one or two times they could actually carry out something like a, a veto decision. Um, and we're also thinking that, you know, editors and producers would have term limits um, and there would be a system in place to demote them if they're not actually fulfilling their duties. So the whole idea here is that um, at any point in time when you're in Discord, um, you wouldn't have to necessarily message someone like me or Russ because um, that's super centralized to, to do something like delete spam or to ban a user who's violating the code of conduct. Um, the idea is that at any point in time, there would be a number of reviewers or editors who have those privileges and you could tag one of them or you could contact one of them um, or they would just be there and would see those actions that need to be taken and um, carry those out themselves. And there would be a very public and transparent audit log of all these actions that are being taken so that if someone does something kind of shady, you can trace it back to um, the person responsible for it and uh, the level of privileges they have. And all, for all of these levels, um, there would be a process in place for you know, demoting or sort of revoking privileges based on whether you're abusing power or not. So all of this can be done um, pretty in a pretty automated sort of way. I think we can build a bot for it, um, or at least from what we can tell, we can build a bot for it. There can be a very public audit log. And I think that a lot of these privileges can be granted almost immediately or, or automatically based on um, the level of points that people reach. And I know that when I say points, it sounds kind of tricky because you could easily game that. So there's a specific way we're thinking of um, allowing people to accrue points. So if you're being helpful with, um, there, there might be like an, an FAQ channel and every time you actually answer a question that is helpful to a community member, you'd get granted points. So you wouldn't get granted points just for being in Discord and chatting with people all day. All day. There would be specific actions you would take to actually accrue those points. And um, that would be a better reflection of your reputation than of just being someone who's chatting. And that does it for my presentation. I see that we're basically out of time, so I'll stop it there. Um, the thing that I would sort of ask this group to help with is um, we want to experiment with a small group and, you know, 10 to 20 people or so who want to test this system of moderation out and um, have us, you know, observe and learn from what works for the group. And, um, you know, assuming that this works out, this is something that we can roll out to the entire community and it could really 
personally, I think it could really transform the way that community engages with one another. And obviously, in the interest of decentralization, this is the direction that we want to move in. So, you know, the faster, the, the better. If you're interested, uh, I'll give you a way to sign up. But um, ideally, you would have, you know, maybe 20 or so folks um, of different backgrounds and different time zones who could try this out and see if it works well for them. Thanks, Jenny. Um, that's awesome. I love what Stack Overflow does. I just wanted to add, I think this has uh, potentially a lot of value far beyond the block stack ecosystem. I think this is the type of tool that any community anywhere could use if it's designed well. Um, I think it's a great initiative. I'd love to contribute. Thanks. Yeah, that's the goal. We we want to make it. Um, I mean, we're starting with Discord because we, st we started off thinking about this in a very big way and it was annoying. We could have like two hour conversations about all the different rules and edge cases that we could implement. But um, the idea is that this this can be extrapolated, appropriated for any sort of community and you could just sort of change it, it could be very modular right you could change out the different privileges you could change out the levels of points i mean i had the levels of points that i had in there were totally arbitrary as well so um we're excited about it because if it works for us it could work for any community yes it's interesting. interesting and so that that's all over stack overflow or or discord oh it would be in discord but stack overflow was very influential in the way yeah the example yeah yeah, because I, I wonder that uh, all those uh, levels I have acquired in, in Discord is, 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 is what they are giving. But it, it's interesting because, you know, that I see the children, you know, that, that they are 11 years old and they're already using those things, you see. And the, the thing is that, uh, of course, it's a good way to learn what, 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 what it's about, you know, because it's a, the new generations are, are fully... Uh, involved in those things, so a way to, to evaluate all that. Um, I just dropped a link to a project called SourceCred. Jenny, I'm not sure if you've heard of it or had a chance to take a look at it. It's a little bit different in that it's less focused on privileges and moderation and more on measuring value contribution, but I think there's a lot of overlap there. So yeah, we can take that conversation offline, but I think we could uh, potentially borrow some ideas from that project too. Oh, thank you. No, I have it. I'll, I'll definitely take a look. Any volunteers on this call right now who want to try this out <laughs> in the next couple of weeks? Yay. I think I'm, I, I what, 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 yeah. Yeah. Let's try it all. Let's try it. What, what, what am I volunteering for exactly? It just <laughs> <laughs> You're going to build the bot lane. No. <laughs> you have to ban the people. You have to ban the people. Um, we're still trying to figure out whether we need to retroactively or we should retroactively apply these different levels of, of moderation privileges to try that out um, so that, you know, we, we don't have to worry about people like accruing these points to begin with, but we'll figure out a good way to experiment with this and I'll let you know we, we want to start it in the next, you know, two weeks or so, but I think that this group would have some of the best insights about what's working and what's not because we're trying to avoid things like, you know, vapid polling and, and, and voting on decisions um, that, you know, it, it, yeah, we'll, we'll get into the, to the details later, but thank you everyone for listening. Awesome. And just to, just to round that out. So the best place to stay involved with that would be um, here in that same contribute block stack repo, right? Yes. I don't think I've posted any issues because I, I, I had it in a different board and I just moved it to that repo. So I think um, okay. I can post an issue and, and everyone can just comment and have their ideas there too. Yeah. I was going to say most of the people on here we've already um, had involved like through GitHub and through StackGov as well. So we should have handles for everybody, but that might be another way just to tag us and keep okay. us out in the loop. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you guys. Wow, well, this is a productive um, hour. So thanks for all the input and, and feedback. Um, so next week we will uh, return to um, more of our update governance call um, and we'll kind of go over some of the highlights. But if you do have action items in the meantime, um, please do use the GitHub uh, in this new tagging system. I think it works great for surfacing things that we want to cover in now, next week's agenda, as well as um, things that we want other members of this group to weigh in on. Anything else? Thanks, everyone. No. Awesome. Thank you, guys.
right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Enjoy.